Howdy folks, Harrison from Mainly Acres Farms, and as you guys can see, I have my machine completely torn apart. So, it is springtime up here in Maine, so I figured it was time to do a bit of spring cleaning. Uh, so I figured this would be a good time to roll some video to show you all the modifications or polishing or finishing up of parts. Since everything's taken apart, it would be real easy for me to share with you guys and demonstrate. So uh, that's basically what I'm going to cover on this video, all the mods I've done on my machine throughout the years, some of the areas that you should concentrate on polishing and finishing up, and also I'm going to cover lubrication in this video as well, because why not? We're going to be putting things back together, might as well do it right. So let's dive right on into it. The first thing we're going to do is get our sewing head put back together. So we're going to need the bottom plate, which is this here, the upper plate, and both of these. So we have one rod that has our presser foot on there, and then the other rod that controls the uh, stitch length of how far the presser foot comes forward. And they ride on each other just like so. So I would suggest to you guys to make sure to polish up these surfaces here. So the back side of this piece and the front side of your presser foot. You can do all four sides like I did, but the main necessary parts to do are these two because they slide up and down on each other like so. Uh, another important piece to do some fiddling and working on is this section here and this little ramp that comes off of the end. On mine, I had some really deep machining marks that went this way, and the same thing on the ramp here. So I took a flat file and took all those machining marks off of that and polished it up. The reason why it's important to do that is because this mechanism here runs on this bottom plate like such. And you see how it comes forward when it comes off of that ramp, if it has a lot of machining marks in here and it's real rough, it'll be hard for that presser foot to come forward like it should, and uh, it just makes things a whole lot smoother. So I would definitely focus on that. So let's go ahead and get everything put back together, but before we do that, let's put some lubrication on it. Now, for the sewing head, I use this automotive grease here. It's uh, basically the same grease you would use for packing bearings and things of that nature. The reason why I tend to use the grease more so than using like uh, some gun oil or some 3-in-1 oil is because the grease stays in place. It doesn't run all over the place and it doesn't get all in the projects. So that's why I've gone to using mainly grease on everything uh, and oil just on a few things. So I'm just going to get a Q-tip, get a little bit of grease on it, and I'm going to rub it on the front and back of this presser foot bar here. And then what I like to do is just take my fingers and kind of rub it in and make it all even all over. Alrighty, that's good for that one. So we'll set that up here. a little bit on this guy on the front face here also quite a bit on this little ramp and cut out and then also all along the back here where it rides with that other piece and again I just smoothen things out with my fingers it also helps remove any extra grease that I might put too much on There we go, and we can go ahead and slap that right on there. Just going to wipe my fingers off real quick so we can get this put together. Alrighty, so to get this together, what I like to do is flip it upside down to where the presser foot looks like this. Take the upper part of the sewing head and use my index finger to push up on the spring 
so we can slide these two underneath and we'll just bring that to until the spring goes into the little cutout right there alrighty you can tell it's springtime and you hear the motorcycles out riding around enjoying the weather <laughs> Alrighty, so with a little bit of tension and holding things into place with your index finger, hold it like such, and we will drop it into the sewing head. But what I like to do is just to put a little bit of grease around the sewing head there, and also on the inside of this little round piece. So that way when the sewing head spins around, it's nice and smooth. Drop it into the sewing head. You can see that it's not all the way set in there but with it in there into place now we can kind of use both of our hands here so let me make sure I'm not blocking you guys view. We're going to push back on the presser foot. Lift up on the disc and bring it down straight like so. And it'll just pop up a little on the back and that's fine. So now what we're going to do is put on the bottom plate and again just taking some of this grease and running it around the edge here and also on the inside here all along here and there and we will go ahead and slap that into place and how we do that is we take our thumb and pull back and down on the presser foot so that way we can slide the notch press that piece out of the way press the put the notch over the presser foot and come up with it just like so so now that we've got that sandwiched together what I like to do is push back on that and push this down if it came out and kind of make it even so that way it sits a bit prettier there so now we can go ahead and put on the tabs underneath and attach it with the nuts. So that's right here and I believe those nuts if I have the socket around here those nuts are a 10 mil. So we'll go ahead and put the plate into place. Now I put mine with the little tab here facing me, um, but I think you could put it the other way. It doesn't really matter. I think that channel's cut out enough for you to go either way, but this is just how I do it. All right, those are just finger tight. And I'm just spinning the head around to make sure it still spins freely. And it does, and we're good. Another thing that we want to pay attention at this point is to make sure that we don't have any free play in our head. And if we did have any free play in there, there's two nuts on the inside of those two bolts that come down on this sewing head. And you can take those back to take up the slack in here um, like I did on my machine. And you guys can see it still spins nice and smoothly. Uh, you can take up too much of that slack and then when you tighten these nuts down here, it will crimp everything in there and it'll be hard to spin your sewing head. So if you're somebody that is looking to do that to kind of lock your presser foot into one direction to where you're not able to spin it around, you can take those nuts all the way back on the post and tighten this down with these two nuts here and it will stay stationary. I don't believe that it will mess with the function of the presser foot or the little tab inside of there that adjusts the stitch. So I think you'll be all set if you guys wanted to do that to make it stationary. There we go. That's all put together. So let's move on to the sewing arm and the Pittman rod. So that is this assembly right here. And the only thing that I did on this was I polished all four sides of the Pittman rod, making sure to leave the teeth up here alone. I didn't do any filing or sanding on those. Uh, also polished up uh, this surface here and that one as well. And that's all the polishing or fixings that I did with that. And then move on to the actual sewing arm here. 
So you guys can see I did quite a bit of work on the inside of the bobbin well there with a Dremel and stone. Uh, just basically removing any burrs, um, any pittiness or rust that was inside of there. So that way when the bobbin and shuttle spin around in there, there's nothing for the thread to catch on or for the mechanism to get all jammed and gunked up. And I also removed a little bit of material in here because when the Pittman rod was running back and forth, the back of the screws, uh, the heads of them on this side, were digging into the metal here. So that's something that you guys can check on your machine if you notice when you take this off that you have deep scratches and gouges in here. Go ahead and remove some of that material so that way it slides in and out and you won't have any worries. So on this piece here, I've already greased everything as you guys can see, but it's uh, you want to get this channel inside of here and you can remove this bottom plate here. There's two flat headed screws that you can remove so you can get in and clean out and lubricate that channel. And then also I put a thin coating of grease on this part here, this surface, on all four parts of the rod, and then on this surface as well. So just a little dab like that on a few of the parts. And then again, I just rub it in with my fingers, spreading it evenly and all over the place. Alrighty. So that's good to go to get put back together. And that's how that goes with the teeth facing down. Push that into place. Now we can set this back on the frame. Get everything situated. And we'll go ahead and put the bolts into place. Now there's three bolts underneath the sewing arm that connect this and hopefully I can get these in blind. There we go. I got the first one started. That's always the hardest one. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and put these three bolts in making sure just to do them finger tight again uh, because we are going to make some adjustments to this to make sure that we uh, have our needle dead center in the hole because uh, there's nothing worse than taking apart your machine and uh, not recentering the needle and then go to do your first stitch and crack that needle right in half. So we're going to make sure to leave these loose for us. Alrighty, now that we got that hand tight and we can still move it around, let's move on. But before we move on, one thing that I didn't cover in the sewing head that I just wanted to briefly touch on is the actual cylinder itself. I did take a flat file and true up the top and the bottom of that. And so I had to make some adjustments on the inside screws on there to adjust this so it didn't slop anymore. So if you guys uh, find that your sewing head is hard to spin around and you have like gaps on one side or the other, you can take a flat file and do like I did and then just make sure to go back and polish it and uh, put the grease to it. Alrighty, so now that that is done, we are going to go ahead and install the drive shaft. So here's that right there. Now I just put a little bit of grease on the drive shaft here and spread it in. And it's not really for any lubricating reason, just to preserve the drive shaft so that way we don't get any rust or pitting on there. Uh, the reason why it doesn't need a whole lot of lubrication is because I have two sealed bearings. I have one in the front here and also one in the rear. I ended up removing this piece here. Now this piece is what the drive shaft originally fit into and just kind of spun around like that. But as you guys can see, there's no bearings or bushings in there. And uh, so instead of drilling this out and trying to make a bearing or something fit into there that will still fit the drive shaft, I made a new bearing block on the back and it's simply just a piece of wood that I drilled a hole out to install these new sealed bearings. Now, the sealed bearings that I ordered to fit this is the 6001-ZZC3. And I'll leave all this information in the description down below. Uh, but that's the bearings that I used. And I went ahead and ordered two because I knew I was going to be adding this bearing in the back. 
And the reason why that's important is because if you don't do that, especially if you guys are going to be adding a motor to your machine, you will eventually wear down the end of your drive shaft or you'll tear out the material out of here, which one, whichever material is weaker, and you'll end up getting a wobble, especially running a motor. That will happen a lot sooner than if you're just using it as a hand crank. So that's why I would definitely recommend you guys to build yourself a bearing block like I did here and run two sets of bearings, especially if you're going to be running this motor. So that's uh, an important mod that I haven't shared with you guys that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So we'll go ahead and put that into place. But before we drive it all the way home, we're going to get our cams and get those ready. So this is the first cam that will go in, followed by this guy here. What's important to know is that we want this side of the cam to be in and touching the frame like that, this little bevel piece here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put plenty of grease on that because that's going to be contacting the frame in the back and spinning. So we want to put plenty of grease on it. And we'll go ahead and slide this back here, push our drive shaft through, get that into place. And then next we'll put this cam on. And the same thing, we just put it back here and slide the cam or the drive shaft forward. Alrighty. So those are into place. Now I'm not going to tighten down the cams right now. I'm just gonna leave them free to do what they want right there on the drive shaft. And the next thing we will install is the arms on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys off of this little tripod and put you on this one back here and get you guys a good clean shot of what I'm doing in the back here. Alrighty, now I got you guys situated at the rear of the machine. You guys can get a real good look at the bearing block that I was talking about just a minute ago. And now we are ready to assemble the back arms onto the machine. So I've already gotten started. I put a copper washer into place here. And there's a couple of copper washers over here as well that I've kind of stuck together with the grease and hold them into place. And then I also put a little bit of grease on the pivot point here as well for the arms. Now for the arms themselves, I do put a little bit of grease on this little disc here on this arm, on the top and the bottom side of it because the uh, stitch adjustment bar runs on this disc. And that's another little modification that I've done, or not really a modification, but just did a really good polish job on the top and bottom side of this disc. There's also, there's some brazing that's done to connect these two together. And I took a file and made sure to clean around there because when I would get to that point in rotating the sewing head, it would always fetch on the back side of it. So make sure to clean that up with a file and then smoothen it up with some sandpaper. I also polished this section here. Hopefully you guys can see that in the light just from about here to here where my fingers are and also on the back side. That's just where it comes in contact with either the frame or the washer or the nut on the other side. So I wanted to make sure that those were nice and polished. On the back side of here, I just trued it up with a flat file, which is basically filed it flat and then polished it up as well. So that way my cams hit nice and center on there and evenly. So that's all the greasing and lubrication for that arm. So we'll move on to this guy here. Now this guy, we only have to concentrate putting the grease on the underside of this because this little presser foot bar runs underneath. So we really don't have to pay attention too much to the top of it. But I went ahead and polished that pivot point and the one on the back and also flattened that up and polished it a bit as well. So that is the only modifications that I made to 
uh, both of these sewing arms here. So let's go ahead and get these into place. So we will start with putting on this guy first and we'll just pull the presser foot down a bit so that way we can set the loop on top. Now we're going to take this guy and what we're going to do is we're going to snake him in back here first. Make sure to move our presser foot lever out of the way there. And then go ahead and drop him in. Now what we're going to need to do, this is the easiest way that I've found of reattaching this to the inner part here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our cam and roll it back. That's why I went ahead and left this loose. So that way we could get the full back extension on this arm. So we'll pull that like that and go down. And now what we're going to do is I'm actually going to move the camera for this point because I want you guys looking at this angle and show you how we get that into place with out all the cussing, fussing, and hammer hitting. <laughs> so let's move you guys over. Alrighty, so you guys can see that this is all the way towards me, towards the rear of the machine, and down. So that way we can take our finger and press up on that guy, and you see how he comes up? And then we just take this arm now and slide it forward into those grooves just like so and that is the easiest way that I have found of putting that into place without all the headaches so let me swing you guys back over here and we will get them attached alrighty as you guys can see they're where they need to be so we are going to go ahead and take our washer that came with the machine and put it on the outside so we have the frame, uh, copper washer, the arm, and then the factory washer on the outside followed by the uh, lock nut or the nylon nut and I just screw that on hand tight no need to go get the wrenches and really crank down on that that will be good enough then we'll take this bolt here and we will dab a little bit of grease on that because that's going to be a pivot point for this arm here. So we'll just put a little grease there and rub it in with our finger. And then we will put the bolt into place. Now this part is a bit tricky because like I said I have two washers um, in between here so we have the frame two washers and then this arm here now the reason I use these two copper washers on my machine was because the arm here was rubbing down on the frame back here so instead of removing it adding heat and bending it out of the way I just added an extra washer into place and it took care of the issue so you may not have to do that on your machine I just had to do that on mine so I figured I'd share that with you guys if you were running into the issue of this arm down here rubbing on the frame. You could try to take care of that by just sticking an extra washer in there. Now the same thing with this bolt here. I just hand tighten this. And the reason why I do that is so it doesn't limit the motion of this rocking back and forth. If you tighten down too tight on this nut or this one it will really limit the motion and this nut here is designed to lock into place and not walk off so you can get away doing it with that and the way you get away with doing it on this bolt here is with this nut that goes on the front of the machine and holds it into place so you can really crank down on this nut to lock this bolt into place so it doesn't walk out as well and I'll show you that when we go back around to the front so the last thing we need to do is go ahead and attach this spring here to the post here. And to keep my springs young, I take some grease on a Q-tip and just stick it inside of the spring and spin it around and then wipe the outside with a rag. That way it stays lubricated and it doesn't catch a lot of dust and dirt from it being on the outside. It stays on the inside and like I said, it keeps the springs young. So 
we'll go ahead and put our spring into place. And this one's real easy to do. I just pull it up with my fingers and put it on the post like that. But if you find that that is too hard for you to do, you can take yourself a tool like this little Allen wrench here or a screwdriver. And what you can do, let me pop it off real quick, is you can take the Allen screw or the screwdriver, whatever you have, pull it up and over the post. Oh, let me try that again. So there we go. Pull it up into the post and then push it into place with your fingers and kind of push it like that. I know that was kind of a cruddy demonstration of that. If I could get back in here and fiddle with it better, uh, it would go on nice. But basically, in essence, you're just pulling it up to level with the post and pushing it on there. So that way you don't have to do a lot of pulling with your fingers and getting it pinched in the spring. So hopefully that has helped you guys out a little bit. Alrighty, so now we are done again on the back side. We're going to move to the front. Uh, we still have the cams that we need to tighten down and all of that, but we will get to that towards the end of putting everything back together. So let's go back to the front and get to moving. Alrighty, welcome back to the front. So all we have to do now is put this little arm into place here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and attach these two springs to the arm. And again, we can pull this down to make life a little bit easier on us. And then we can take our fingers and put them on. But I find with these, the Allen key trick works real well. And this one here, I can usually, once I get one on, I can get the other one on. So there we go. We got those two springs on. Now we can put this arm into place. Now this arm, like the ones on the back, I polished up the pivot points there, and that was it. Another copper washer into place here. Uh, before we do that, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let's put in our needle driver. Uh, this was real easy to polish up. I just chucked this up in a drill and spun it real fast and polished it with some fine grit uh, sandpaper. And then we just give that a thin coating of grease before we slide it into place. Now you'll notice that I removed this and left the lug on there. The reason why I did that is so that way I don't have to readjust the needle depth when I get everything put back together. So I would really recommend you guys to leave your lug into place when you take your machine apart. And that can easily be done um, by first removing the uh, hand crank here and then take this arm and at the same time the locking link will come off of it and you can leave this into place so that way you just pull it out like I'm doing right here except dropping it into play. So there we drop it going down nice and smooth nice seal on there with the grease in it <laughs> like a little hydraulic. Alrighty so now that we got that into place we're going to take our arm here we're going to put just a little bit of grease on that contact point there. Also around here where the link goes into place. We're also going to put a little bit of oil here where the other part of that link comes and meets here. And here's the link that I was telling you guys about this little piece here. And how that goes on is just like this. So you guys can see that flat point here. It goes right on there and spins. So what we're going to do, like I was saying, is we're going to meet up the link with the post while we're putting this on uh, the main pivot post on the frame. So we'll go ahead and line those up, give it a little jiggle and a shake, and there we go. So now our link is attached to the needle driver, and the arm is in the place where we need it to be. So we'll follow that up with the factory washer again, the nylon nut, and then the same thing on the back. We just hand tighten, so that way... It'll move nice and free. Alrighty, we're ready to put on our leaper assembly here with the tension disc. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to snake this in between the frame and this sewing arm here. And while we're doing that, we're going to take the tip of our leaper here and put it in the hoop on the back side of this arm. And then holding it into place like so, we'll go ahead and put the screws in. Now we can go ahead and put on our other tension disc. And what I like to do is I like to leave the nut on there like so. So that way I can put it back on with a flat headed screwdriver. So what I like to do is I like to get it started first by hand. Hold my guides where I want them. Alrighty, so we got our guide there. We'll just take our flat headed screwdriver and give that a little tighten there. And now that is all good and ready to go. So now, is this still loose? Let me loosen these up a bit. Oh, it's probably because my pressure foot's on there. Yeah, that's still loose. Like I said, we wanted to leave these nuts down here, these bolts down here, loose so that way we can adjust center again when we get everything put back together. So let's go ahead and put our hand crank into place. And for doing this, I find that it's helpful to kind of stand up above your machine because what you need to look at is you need to make sure that this bearing here on your Pitman rod goes to the inner track here. And then this arm ball bearing needs to go on the outer track here. Now, one thing that I wanted to clear up that I talked about in my uh, last lubrication video is I used to lubricate these tracks with the grease. Uh, but a subscriber of mine told me that I shouldn't be doing that anymore. And the reason being is because he did that to his machine and had a motor on it. And he ended up getting flat spots on his ball bearings because they were just sliding around on one side instead of rolling around like the ball bearing should. So I no longer put any grease in the track. I do put some grease around here where it meets up with the frame. And I also use the gun oil and put a drop or two of oil on these bearings and spin them. Now, I shouldn't have to do that because these are sealed bearings, but I find that they're not really sealed and they do leak oil and grease and whatnot. So I do drop the oil in there and spin them around a bit to get the oil worked into there and I'll see like a lot of junk come out of it. So that's why I know they're not sealed. Uh, but the two bearings that I bought here are brand new sealed bearings, so don't have to put any oil to those or any grease to those. They're good to go. Alrighty, so I'm going to move the camera over a bit to get you guys a good angle on what I'm about to do. Hopefully you guys can get a good view of what I'm doing here. So what we need to do, like I said, is we need to line up the pin with that and also get the bearings into these tracks at the same time. So it is a bit tricky, but like I said, um, I'm probably not going to get a real good angle on this or a view because like I said, there's a very tight space in here. But just know that it can be done by just you know patiently lining up everything in the right track and then giving a little push just like so <laughs> so everything is into place we got our um, threaded rod sticking out here the drive shaft and what we're going to go ahead and do is put on our lock washer and nut onto here to pull this tight and into place so that way we can set our cams in the back. Now, my machine didn't come with a lock washer, so I would suggest if yours didn't either to go out and buy one. If not, you will have a sore toe and no time flat because I've had my hand crank walk off of the drive shaft and it hurts because it's heavy. <laughs> Now, I have modified the um, hand crank. I've shown that on another video. I basically took it over to my father's and we cut out a groove here 
uh, so that way I could run a belt on it for running a motor on my machine. So um, I also had to remove some material from the back side. You guys may have noticed the little holes drilled in the back. That was just to solely balance this so we could cut the groove in there. So um, that wasn't really a modification for performance in any way, shape, or form. Um, I am currently running a different motor on this machine. And I'll explain all of that in another video because this video is going to be long enough with everything we have in there. So... With no further delay, we'll go ahead and get this tightened, and um, we use a 17 mil socket. Make sure that we're righty tighty, and go ahead and bring that drive shaft right into the seat of the hand crank. Now, since we don't have the cams attached, I can actually take this whole thing and pull it out. So just be mindful of that when we're coming around the back to um, tighten down the cams. Not to bump this too hard because if you put enough grease lubrication on, I've had it come out and almost hit my foot that time too. So now that that's into place, what we're going to do is we're going to put our hand crank at the 2 o'clock position. So this is going to help you guys if you need any more further instruction on the timing when it comes to the cams. Now when I talk about timing, it involves not only the cams, but it also involves the pitman rod and what is going on inside of your bobbin. So we're going to work on the first part of the timing by adjusting the cams and putting them into place. And then once we get that done, I'll come over here and we'll uh, center the needle and tighten those bolts down. And then we will come and look inside of the bobbin and make sure that we're set up correctly with the timing in there. Alrighty, so this is the best angle I could get for you guys for um, showing you the uh, cam placement on the back. So that's going to be the first part of the timing. So what we're going to do, you guys can see those are the holes I was talking about that we drilled out to balance this to cut this groove here. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to put our crank in the 2 o'clock position. So you guys will see my handles over here in about that orientation. And what we're going to do is we are going to center up this cam here. So while pushing the crank this way to make sure that it's all the way into place, we are going to move that cam in the center of the drive shaft to where both of the Allen keys are kind of sitting on the top and centered with the drive shaft and still making sure that we're at the two o'clock position and we are so at this point here it's really important to make sure that this cam is all the way against the frame and the hand crank is against the frame on the other side um, when we tighten these down because we don't want any of the wobbling action going on like that so that looks good and what i'll go ahead and do is tighten this allen key here and this is a three mil allen key screw and to get the other side, what I do is kind of hold that into place and rock my hand crank around. So that way I can get to this guy. And again, you want to tighten those down pretty good. Alrighty, so just double checking here. We're at two there. Everything's still spinning. Ooh not nice and freely okay so the reason why I did that is because I got those a little too tight up against each other so what I'm gonna do is back off just a little bit to give it a little play in there and see if it makes this a lot smoother um, like I said you can get these as tight as you want but it's sometimes it's not a good idea to do that because it will just add that much more friction and stuff that you don't need to add. So let's see, there's 12, we'll call that 2, move this into place, back it out just a little, like that. Tighten that one down good. I know my hand's in the way, sorry guys, I'm just tightening down this Allen key here. Oh, 
winter time for here that happened. And there's very little slop there. Just little like that. And I guess we're just going to have to live with that. Because like I said, if we were to get this any tighter, we'd want some bushings in there to allow that to be able to sit and not have that extra movement. Um, but that's going to make cranking this out a lot easier. So let me just make sure we're still at two. And those are tightened down and good to go. So the next cam to get into place is this guy here and basically what I do is I center up this key with the center of these two like that and then also make sure to oh, I need to tighten that guy down just a bit more there we go and we want to make sure that this guy let's put my presser foot down runs in center here so that's going to be gapped out almost all the way to there. So we'll put our presser foot back up. Spin them around. Put them into play. Right about there. Tighten it all the way down. And spin to the other side. Tighten that all the way down. Alrighty, so let's put our pressure foot into play and make sure that that's spinning nice. I could move this cam over a bit more. See how it's kind of the roller wheels hitting on this side of the bar there and that is all the way into play there and tighten down so yeah I'm going to actually adjust this cam and move it over a bit alrighty great now by just moving this cam out a bit further to come as close as center to this arm as possible it's taken out the slop just very little in between there so I like that it spins nice and freely as you guys can see and everything is hitting right where it should and I like that looks good alrighty now everything is put back together and we're doing good now at this point it's good to go ahead and give a couple cranks to make sure that everything is functioning the way it should be and also that it's nice and smooth you shouldn't really have a whole hard time moving that around another thing you want to pay attention to over here is that your presser foot is moving the way it should and also that it's not moving while that needle bar see how it's moving back now you want to make sure that that movement is being done when the needle bar is up in its highest position because that will stop your material from advancing forward. So it looks like everything is good to go on mine. I'm going to set you guys over here because we're going to recenter the needle and we're also going to readjust the timing in the bobbin well because I removed everything out of there so that way we'd have to start from scratch with setting up the second timing. We've already set up the cams the way they need to be so now we need to adjust inside of here. So I'm going to get you guys up on this tripod and get to going and we will be all done. It will be the last of it, I promise. Alrighty. So with the presser foot up in this position where you're going to slowly drop our needle down and wouldn't you know, look at that guys, if I were to start sewing right now, I would definitely snap that needle. So that's why we left these bolts under here loose. So we're going to lift that up, adjust our needle bar into place, make sure now with the needle in there, that we position this dead center with the hole on the top plate there and with the needle still where it's at we're going to go ahead and tighten these bolts all the way down 
I'm just further hand tighten them down now that I have a really good idea of where we want it to go and I'll just give it a crank real quick just to double check that's falling dead where it needs to perfect alrighty so I'm going to take the socket now I believe these uh, bolts under here are 10 mil let's see if I'm right ah oh, bingo so we're going to set the ratchet to righty-tighty. We're going to find that. Give it a crank. Now I also, when I'm tightening these up underneath, after I get one tightened, I like to give it a spin. Because when I first owned my machine, I would tighten these up. And when I got to the back one and I tightened it all the way too tight, it started making this harder to spin. Now the reason that was, if I can spin you guys around, make sure you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. So what happened when I tightened this bolt down here all the way tight is it was pinching the Pitman rod in between the frame and the sewing arm here and it was causing a lot of resistance so that's why after I tighten one I'll go to the next one I'll tighten it all the way down I'll give a couple cranks to see where it's at and then typically with the last bolt I just hand tighten so these two will be tightened with the wrench that one will just be hand tightened I don't know if everybody's gonna have to do that on their machine just figured out and let you guys know what I've experienced on this one Alrighty, so we just have one more to tighten with the wrench. Still spinning smooth and great. And then the last one on the back, like I said, I just hand tighten. Don't need a wrench uh, because I found that when I do that, it does pinch. So not even going to bother with it. Alrighty, so now our needle depth is adjusted because we didn't, oh, a little bit higher. Alrighty, so our needle uh, bar depth is, is already adjusted because we never took this lug off of the needle driver. But if you did, you just simply take a flat-headed screwdriver here and loosen that screw up and then you can adjust your needle driver and if you need any help with that I have a video I'll leave a link above this one and you guys can see if it's adjusted properly with a little test that I share with you guys alrighty so the last thing that we are going to do is we are going to drop our um, bobbin shuttle and the shuttle mechanism into place here so that's going to be this little guy here, the shuttle and the bobbin here. Now I wanted to give you guys a close-up of what my bobbin and shuttle look like. See how it's nice and clean? There's still a little bit of rust and pitting, well no, not really rust, but bluing or pitting or whatever was on there. Um, the main thing I wanted to make sure is that it was nice and smooth. Let me show you kind of a before, <laughs> uh, this piece here. You guys can see there is absolutely rust covered all on it a lot of pitting I mean even the look at that on the bobbin you can see how it wasn't milled properly so if your bobbin and bobbin shuttle look like this you definitely need to spend some time in cleaning that up with some fine grit sandpaper and cleaning it out so that way it can run smoothly inside of the bobbin well so before we drop this little mechanism in there, you're right, it's going to get a little bit of grease. And I just put a little bit of grease around the gears and on the bottom part of the plate. And then I also run some on the inside of the bobbin well, just around the post on the inside. So just around that post on the inside where this locks into not anywhere else inside of there because I find if you put any oil or grease inside of there it tends to catch a lot of the fibers from the thread and it just makes a gunky nasty mess in there so just mainly concern yourself with around the teeth and around the post that this sits on so we're at noon with our hand crank so we're going to drop this in at the three o'clock position 
and I find that if it doesn't want to go in, we can kind of jiggle our hand crank back and forth, but it will eventually get where we need it to go. Go ahead and drop this into place. Now, I don't have any thread on here, and, and that's on purpose, so that way we can see if the timing is set correctly. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go through the stages here. And what I'm looking for when I'm spinning this is that when my needle comes down and the bobbin spins to the back side, I want to make sure that the hook, let me get a pointing device, that the hook on the shuttle, so this hook here, is just on the back side of the needle. And if you find that putting your mechanism in at three o'clock and you're now over here at the two going into three and you find that that hook is like dead in line with the needle or just on this side of it, you will need to make that fine tune adjustment to move it backwards. And how you do that is there are two nuts on your Pitman rod here. You will loosen those up and then manually with your thumb, advance the Pitman rod either forward or backwards to be able to get your hook to fall on the back side of your needle. Now on mine, it's set up perfectly. I don't have to do any fixing or fiddling around inside of there. Another thing we want to pay attention to is that when we come over here into nine o'clock, that our bobbin and shuttle has moved completely all the way around and that there is enough space in between the needle and the mechanism for that locking stitch to complete. Now, if your needle or your bobbin is in this position here at the nine o'clock, then what's gonna happen is that's gonna pinch your thread every time and you're gonna be snapping your upper thread constantly. So that's why when people leave me comments, you know, my upper thread is snapping, what is the problem? Um, the problem either could be that the needle bar needs to be adjusted further down or that the timing needs to be fine-tuned and that means allowing that room in there to be there when it goes to lock the stitch in and then also when you're at the two going into three is that the tip of your hook is on the back side of the needle. So hopefully that has helped you guys out tremendously on the timing. I shouldn't be getting any more uh, timing questions. Uh, no, I enjoy them, guys. Keep them coming. Um, so that's about it. We got our needle centered. We have the timing set up properly for our bobbin in the cams, and we are good to go. Alrighty, folks, that's a wrap on today's video. I know it was an epically long video, so let me know if you made it all the way to the end by sounding off down in the comments below. That'll let me know if I should make long videos like this uh, in the future. I'm sorry that it was long, but there was a lot of information that I wanted to go over in this video. Some older information and some newer stuff for you guys out there that were waiting for the new stuff. Um, I'm going to have a video that follows out after this going over a couple more modifications that I've done to my machine. I just didn't have the time to do it in this video, and I'm pretty sure you guys seen all of that. So if you're following us on Facebook, thank you so much. Make sure to hit the like button if you like the video and let us know what you thought in the comments down below. And if you're watching us on YouTube, our YouTube family, make sure to uh, subscribe if you're not already. Hit the bell icon so you know when the new videos come out. And um, both of you guys, feel free to share the video if you think that it was helpful. So as always, guys, take care and spend time with that family.